Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Brothers and sisters, in the fifth year after emigration, so five years after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he left Mecca and went to Medina. How old was he approximately? Fifth year, how old was he roughly? Just to make sure we're kind of going with the timeline together. He was 53 years old when he left Mecca. He was a prophet at the age of 40, roughly. He lived 13 years in Mecca. At 53, he emigrated to Medina. Five years after the immigration, how old is he roughly? 58 years old. 57, 58. So the Prophet ﷺ at this year, around somewhere around that time, the Yahud and the leaders of Bani Nadir, uh, what's up with them? Did they not leave Medina? Did they leave or not? They did. Who were the ones that stayed in Medina from the Yahud? Bani Quraidha. Banu Nadir left because remember they tried to assassinate the Prophet ﷺ and they breached the treaty. But now they're outside Medina, but they're plotting an attack against two, against the Muslims and the Prophet ﷺ. But what they do is that they will not go face to face, these people. What they will do is that they will go to other tribes to collaborate as much as they can. So for example, they go to Quraysh. And they go talk to them, Abu Sufyan, big shots. And Quraysh has the same goal as Banu Nadir, to kill the Prophet ﷺ. People have different reasons of that, but the goals are the same. So Quraysh joins forces with Banu Nadir, and they have thousands of people with them. Then the leaders of Banu Nadir, such as Huyay ibn Akhtab, that's the name of one of the leaders, they go to another major Arab tribe, Ghatafan. They talk to him and Ghatafan also joins. And then more and more tribes are joining more and more and the army grew so much that now they have how many? 10,000 soldiers. According to what I know and what the mashayikh and the scholars they say that this number is not known for the Arab to collaborate in such fashion. And it's very sad that the day they collaborated to that level was against Islam and the Prophet ﷺ. May Allah grant us wisdom and allow us to collaborate on that which is good. Say Ameen. Watch who you collaborate with. So after they have set the 10,000 soldiers, and they're, it's going to take some time. It's going to take time. Assemble all of this together. The horses, the camel, the weapons. Brothers and sisters, what happens next? The news arrives to the believers and the Prophet in Medina. Let me show you the map of Medina roughly. That's how Medina roughly obviously looked like. On the south end, this is called like a harra or like some very rough, rocky area that people don't go on to because it's very rough, very difficult. People don't go over it. And you have palm trees here, palm trees there. In the south, very congested palm trees. So once again, adding reinforcement that big armies will not enter. From the east, you see what's going on as well. Also lava rocks and things of that sort. The enemy cannot enter. West side, same thing. So there's one and only one direction that such large army can ever enter, which is from the north. With this being known, with the numbers of the enemy also being known, and the capabilities of the believers was also comprehended, they believe the believers agreed on a plan to fight them head on no what shall we do let's attempt to dig a trench dig a trench here how deep about 15 feet 10 feet deep 10 feet roughly how wide 15 how long roughly three miles what rough numbers again you might find different numbers in there how deep 10 feet that's deeper than this. How wide? 15 feet. That's further than this. I know the ones watching, Zakamullah, we're so sorry about this, but this is the beauty of attending a live session. So next time you ever hear there's a lecture that eventually be online, sometimes you don't have to sacrifice, and actually you have to sacrifice and attend a live session, inshallah. Zakamullah khair. May Allah grant you all Jannah. Can you clap for them, please? I appreciate your patience. I love you guys for the sake of Allah. 
And please, if you ever comment on the videos, ask if there's an option to comment. Just be nice with me a little bit. I know I went a bit tough in the last session, but just forgive me. Oh, Allah, I love you, all right? Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. So with this being said, 10 feet deep, 15 feet wide, about three miles long. We got to work as fast as possible. The believers, they're all in. Bismillah, the digging of the trench, the process starts. Everyone contributes, the rich and the poor, no difference. The one who never served himself is now digging as well. No more luxury. All of them are digging hard, as fast as they can, as much as they can. And amongst the ones who were digging, ah, was a wonderful, beautiful 57, 58 year old man working one of the hardest tasks, worked so hard, was sweating, and the hair on his chest was no longer visible. Why? Because all the sand and all of the dust, who was that man doing all that work? It was none other than Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. How amazing is that? That he was fit enough to be able to do such task by the help of Allah first and foremost, working hard. You know how motivating that is to the believers? Do you agree with me? Motivation. And this is a lesson that we cannot let pass by just like that. I can teach you, for example, to say the truth. So I tell you the reward. If you say the truth, Allah grants you Jannah. If you lie, Allah may take you to hell. It's just generic, a hadith ayat. So that may change you. And now you're like, I want to say the truth. I may draw and do a presentation and give you a story that impacts you and hope that will influence you to say the truth. But there's no better teaching technique. You can never have a positive impact as strong as when you walk the advice you're preaching. You can never beat that. I can tell my kids, don't lie, Baba. Okay, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie. And like, okay, okay, Baba, if you lie, the Prophet ﷺ said this, Allah said that, okay. Hey, Maryam, who's calling? Amina, who's calling? Uh, such and such. Okay, answer and tell them I'm in the bathroom. The whole lecture I gave them is in a shredder. <laughs> and I'm being nice with my words, being sophisticated, shredder. Right? It's done. It's over. So I can say all, all that stuff, but until I apply it, that will ease things on you. So there's two things. Number one, make dua to all those who teach to be able to walk the talk. Say ameen. And, make, and we pray to Amir, the du'a we say Amin. And may Allah make it easy on the audience to apply the good that they learn. And may Allah make you patient the moment one of the people you hear from falls. May Allah keep you patient and make your heart attached to Allah and not to the creation. Say Amin. Fantastic. The Prophet ﷺ is digging. Phenomenal. And he says beautiful lines, picking it up from the believers. He says, لَوْلَ اللَّهِ مَهْتَدَيْنَا if it was not for Allah, we would not be guided, encouraging them. This is a ni'mah from Allah that we're Muslim. Don't feel, don't ever feel like, look what Islam brought us. Look at us today. No. Say, if it was not for Allah, we would not be guided. So you be proud. You're grateful. Then the companions, they say, Allahumma la khayra illa khayra al-akhirah. Oh Allah, there's no good life except the life of the afterlife. This dunya is not worth much. So shower your mercy upon the supporters and the immigrants, people from Mecca. See that momentum is building and they're working hard. And the Prophet is saying it, the Prophet making dua, beautiful stuff. You know what some people, we have these videos or stuff like that, may Allah forgive us. People what? They dig for gold, right? And they give them the attribute. Oh, that person is looking for gold and digging for gold. Meaning trying to trick people. A'udhu Billah. The believers, what are they digging for? They told you, we're not digging for dunya, we're digging for akhirah. May Allah grant us the best of the afterlife and this life. While they're working brothers and sisters, and usually when you work physically hard so much, what do you tend to feel hungry? quicker. You need more energy. You drive so much, you need more fuel. They're working day and night and the food in Medina was no longer enough. That's how much work they had and that's how little food they had. Subhanallah. Food was very limited. The Prophet ﷺ was struggling. Sahaba were struggling, but they kept working. We cannot let a day pass. They can come any moment. If all what's left from the digging is this much, that can be enough for them to enter, yes or no? A significant half a mile, that's big enough for the 10,000 people. They will come into groups, may Allah grant us Jannah and wisdom. So the Prophet worked and worked. The narrations suggest some of the companions 
lived the entire day with a few dates. That's it. The entire day. And other narrations said that as the time passed, because the digging was taking day one, day two, three a week, some companions went through three days with no meal. Three days. Water, survival mode, whatever was available. That's it. Three days. And you know who was amongst the people who was starving, struggling, and hungry, and it was physical on them, apparent? It was the Prophet ﷺ. It was so bad. The Prophet was so hungry. He had rocks placed on his stomach. Then he wrapped a wrapper around it, like a cloth, and he tightened it up on his stomach. Why is that? You know when you have stomach pain and it hurts a lot, what do you typically do? Right? And you put pressure. He had to work. I got to move on in life. I'm not going to keep doing this. I can't dig with one hand. So I'm going to put rocks, tighten it up, put the pressure, relieve the pain, and let's continue working. May Allah make us grateful to the presence of the Prophet ﷺ. May Allah allow us to appreciate the life that he had put for you and I to say, La ilaha illallah. May Allah make us proud of what the Prophet ﷺ did. Say, I mean, how sad is it? that we're shy to say and talk about him. May Allah grant us strength and dignity more and more. Amir Rabbil Alameen. Jabir radiallahu anhu saw this. Jabir sees the signs of hunger. It's killing him. Killing him. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam sees Jabir. Jabir comes to the Prophet. He says, Ya Rasulullah, can you give me permission to go home? And that's what the believers did. Yasta'zinunak. They asked permission. Munafiqeen, hypocrites. They just go away. They, they try to be slick. Believers, they asked. So the Prophet said, for you, you can go home. So Jabir goes home, and he wants to talk to his wife. So Jabir asks his wife for food. He says, هل عندنا طعام? Do we have food? She said, very little food. What was it? Anaq, a very little tiny goat, and some barley to make bread. That's it. That's all what we have. So the Pro uh, Jabir says, I saw the signs of hunger on the Prophet. Well, and I cannot handle this. We need to do something. And look how the companion felt, loved the Prophet ﷺ so much that he's preferring the Prophet over himself. You see that? Not all of it for me. May Allah make us selfless people, care about people. May Allah allow us to help others say, I mean, not be selfish. So Jabir, he said that, and right then and there, so right then and there, that wonderful wife Jabir had, العناق, and she started working on the bread. She slaughtered that goat and started cooking it. That's it, and that's how generous of a woman she was. Didn't complain, that's all what we have. Are you out of your mind? You have to be realistic. No, that's it. Yalla, bismillah, may Allah put blessings in our food, whatever the case is. So then Jabir helped his wife cook. May Allah allow me and the brothers to help our wives cook at times. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. Anyhow, and may allow us, sometimes we do the whole meal, inshallah. I mean, you see, no, I mean from the brothers at all. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. Uh, anyways, let's move on. Okay? So then, brothers and sisters, what happened? Jabir radiallahu anh, he's heading towards inviting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His wife tells him, Jabir, listen up. When you go to the Prophet, you let him know how much food we got. And you tell them, you know, it's basically it's enough. La nafar nafarain rajul rajulain about one, two men, three men, two men approximately. Okay? Jabir says, I got it. So then Jabir goes to the Prophet ﷺ and he whispers, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah. Yes. We have prepared food for you. He, he said, What did you do? He said, a small goat, very tiny. And some bread is in the oven. We're baking it. And we're going to make it fresh for you. We didn't take it out yet. It's being cooked as we speak. We want you to come over. So the Prophet says, Kathirun tayyib. It's good. It's, it's abundant. It's enough. So then the Prophet Sallallahu he tells Jabir, Okay, you go ahead. Go. But do not let your wife or you uncover the food. Keep the food covered. Okay? Keep the bread in the oven. Keep the meat that you cooked in the pot. Until I come, okay, okay, plan. So Ya Rasulullah, just like two people, something like that you can bring with you, okay? He's like, okay. Then the Prophet said, Ya Ahl al-Khandaq, oh people digging in the trench, 
digging that trench. Jabir invites you for a feast. Jabir was like, فَاسْتَحْيَيْتُ حَيَاء لَا يَعْلَمُهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Jabir said, I was so embarrassed, an embarrassment that only Allah knows of. Then he says, جَاءَ بِالْخَلْقِ Jabir brought the creation, that's what he said, he brought the creation over a tiny goat and some bread. Then Jabir start walking towards his house. Iftadahna, iftadahna. And he akalnaha. And we're in such a bad shape. And by the way, Jabir is not just nervous about the food, he's nervous from his wife. <laughs> so he comes, he tells his wife, iftadahna. So the, Jabir is walking. Behind him, a distance is the Prophet. And who's behind the Prophet? How many? 1,000 plus people. 1,000 plus people. So the wife says, Bika wa bik, fiku fik. Bika wa bik. He says, Bika wa bik. What is wrong with you? Are you kidding me? What is this? He says, I don't know what to tell. I, I told him what you told me to tell him. Shuf, look at the sister. Look at the believer. Shuf. She told him, You told the Prophet the amount of food we have? He said, Yes. She, he told the Prophet how much food they had. She said, Then the Prophet knows what he's doing. Ya Allah. Anna yeah, saying it on the stage, she's sitting, relaxing, chillax. It's easy. But for her, you get nervous over five people coming over without calling. Oh my God, oh my God, five people coming over. Ya Allah, why, why Ya Allah? Let the earth open and swallow me, Ya Allah. Why, over five people. Five people, right? Brothers and sisters, mothers and daughters, husbands and sons, it's chaos. Did you tell them to come? Why did you, okay, five, relax, relax. A box of pizza, alhamdulillah, more than enough. If you don't like it, I don't know if they're good friends. Let's move on. So the point being is that this wife believes in Allah and His Messenger. The Rasul said that. It's the Prophet of Allah. And I trust him. Ya Allah. Look what Jabir said. Jabir said, and she lifted a hardship from me that only Allah knows. Subhanallah. The one who made Jabir Jabir, and we're talking about him, was his wife. Just like how the Prophet ﷺ came down from the mountain at the age of 40, terrified, told his wife Khadija, لَقَدْ خَشِيتُ عَلَى نفسي. I think I'm losing my mind. I think I'm about to be destroyed. And Khadija says, no, kalla wallah. Ya Muhammad, don't say that. That was about what, 5 plus 13, 18 years ago. That's what Khadija said to the Prophet. You will be fine. And who made the Prophet strong and steadfast? His, after Allah, it was Khadija. And now that's what Jabir goes through from his wife. We appreciate that. May Allah grant every husband and wife the ability to help one another. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. So Jabir, he had that invitation made by the Prophet and they start coming. Who is the one serving? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told Jabir, he told the wife of Jabir, bring me another sister to help me. So another sister came to help out. And the Prophet ﷺ had the two pots, or the pot of meat and the uh, uh, bread coming out from that cover from the oven. And he told the companions, 1,000 plus, Udkhulu wala tadaghatu. Enter, but don't crowd up, okay? And the companions did. They came in, respect, or one command. Bas, alf, 1,000 plus. Not 17 times, uh, bro brothers, brothers, no, not, come on. This way, no, one, one time. Udkhulu, enter and don't crowd up. And they got the point. May Allah make us respectful people like that. May Allah make us people of wisdom. Say I mean. May Allah make us people who walk the talk in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they came. That's the way the Prophet served. He would open up the pot of meat, bring the meat, close up, close the cover. So he never left it uncovered. He kept it covered. So he uncovered it, picked up the meat and covered it. Then got the bread uncovered, got the bread, cut the piece, and put the meat on the bread. Some people call it fatta. Allah alam, that's the, anyhow. People start getting hungry. May Allah grant us jannah. All right, and then he gave it. One after the other, group after group, group after group, a pot, that's it. Until how many people ate? 1,000 plus people. And food still remained. And then Jabir and his wife ate. And food still remained, and they start passing it to their neighbors. So if we speak about the Prophet, I just spoke that he was one of the greatest teachers. No, no. He is the greatest teacher, correct? I spoke about him being the greatest husband, correct? But there's something we have to all not lose focus on. He is the greatest Prophet. And this is religion. 
And it's something we have to all appreciate that the Prophet of Allah Muhammad, first and foremost, is a prophet. That's the number one title when we talk about him. You all keep in mind. This is a miracle Allah bestows upon us after we become real men and real women. This miracle never happened before the digging of the trench. You saw that? You show Allah what you're capable, you do your best, and Allah will bless you. May Allah bless us all. Amir Rabbil Alameen. Now, brothers and sisters, the digging continues, where they're working hard. Oh, we're getting there, we're getting there. As they're digging, the companions found a massive rock. A rock that is so difficult to break. Sahaba come with an axe, try to crush it. Nothing. Small piece, nothing. Everybody tried. Whoever was there tried. And Allah knows best. Then they complained to the Prophet. Ya Rasulullah, we have this rock. Oh, unbelievable. So the Prophet ﷺ comes, brings the axe. What does he say? Bismillah. Because he knows I can't do it myself. Without Allah, I'm a nobody. Without Allah, you and I are nothing. The Prophet says, Allahumma la takilni ila nafsi. He said, he makes dua, oh Allah, don't make me independent, not even for a blink of an eye. Because I can't survive, not even for a blink of an eye, without you, ya Allah. And that's when success comes related to Allah. Bismillah. Bam! The strongest man, by the way, of all the army was the Prophet. And فَكَسَرَ ثُلُثَهَا Then he broke one third of it. When he broke one third, look what he said. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allah just revealed to me. Revealed what? The keys to Asham. What does it mean? We will conquer Asham. You know the area around the Roman Empire? The great empire of the Romans and the nearby such and such? We will conquer it. Excuse me? And you have to appreciate what's going on. You're saying this, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at a point where we can't even fight, like we're digging the trench. At a lowest and weakest point, we never had enemies against us in the entire life of the Muslims. From the moment the Prophet was revealed to at 40 until 57, 58, never did the enemy collaborate like today and out of all the days, he's saying, you know what? There's hope. And that's what we learn from the Prophet And it's my job and your job when you see people who are weak to bring them strength by the will of Allah. That's our job. Oh, I can't do it. No, inshallah, you can do it. So the Prophet as he was digging, he revealed what Allah revealed to him. We will conquer Asham. Islam will spread. And he predicted that. And that's what the hope that we need to bring to the people. You know what some of the enemy tries to do? Try to defeat you, not physically, no, emotionally. The whole drugs, the whole alcohol, the other avenues, making you so scared of being a Muslim. You walk at work that it got so much into your head that your brother or sister walks by, you don't say, Salaamu Alaikum, because you're worried. You don't want to say, you change your name because you're worried. So they were able to infiltrate into our brains to make us paralyzed, not proud of our deen, let alone speak about it. Let alone invite you towards it, yes or no? So they defeated us so much, especially using calamities that some who claim to be Muslim do it, but you should never feel like that. And we're gonna speak up, and as they say, we're gonna wake up the life out of the sleeping giant, but I think it's already awake. If you look around, alhamdulillah, there's, there's, there's a revival. Yes, you saw what happened last weekend of this major event that happened here in this country. A sports event and that whatever break and then things that many people say is haram and horrible and it's so sad how many people, adults, youngsters watch these things on TV. This, shuf. Yes, there's a lot of evil. Yes, there's a lot of corruption. But there's also a lot of, a lot of construction. Yes or no? Look how many masajid we have today. Look how many people attend the masajid today. Look around you once more time. Who would believe these things may happen? All these masajid, do you agree with me or not? So yes, there are things going downhill. But don't buy this narration. Oh, this world, wallah, there's no point of living. We're all destroyed. La, ya akhi, la, wallahi. I swear by the one who made us all here that every single person in the world, a time will come where they say, la ilaha illallah. How about that? La, la, this is a big claim. Give me a hadith. This is the future. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna Allah Allah made me see the whole earth. How? 
Come on, we stopped asking these questions. Allah can do whatever He wants. As we said before, you can FaceTime with someone on the other side of the globe. Allah cannot show you the whole world. So the Prophet says, Allah made me see the whole world. And He made me see how Islam will enter every house and they all will believe in Allah. We might die and not see it. But may Allah make us people that are remembered that we started that. Say Ameen. So be strong and be proud of your identity. And no matter what the case is, inshallah there is khair. Yes, there's a lot of con corruption, but there's also a lot of construction. The Prophet grabbed the axe and smashed it again. The next third broke and he says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, we will conquer the Persian Empire. This is big claim, people. This is huge. Next one, Allahu Akbar hits it. What happens? We will conquer Yemen. If we have any Yemeni here, say La ilaha illallah. That's how is the prediction? Say takbir. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This is Rasulullah predicted that. So all people from Yemen, Persia, Sham, around the world. You go to say Rasulullah thank you in Jannah, inshallah. May Allah allow us to be able to say that to him. And look, you are the prediction. So don't you ever ask for any more signs. Don't you ever ask for no more proofs. Proofs are there. It's enough. What's out there is enough. And if you needed more, wallahi, Allah would have sent more. What's out there is enough. May Allah protect us. Say ameen. SubhanAllah. Brothers and sisters, the digging comes to an end. The trench is dug. The Muslims are prepared as the enemy comes. How many Muslim soldiers were there? About 3,000 soldiers being prepared. Brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ makes dua. You do the work. Did they do the work or no? Did they struggle? They got hungry. They got tired. They saw rocks. Allah helped them. But then the Prophet ﷺ makes dua. He says, Allahumma munzil al kitab. Oh Allah, the one who revealed the book. Sari al hisab, the one who is swift in reckoning. Ihzimil ahzab, destroy the, those, the confederate, those who united against us. Ihzimhum wa zalzilhum, defeat them and shake them. Make dua to Allah and believe. To some people that makes no sense. It's against all odds. What will the dua do to you? Ah, that's what some people say. One of our mashayikh, a guy came to him. He said, I'm going to ask you a question. You see the status of the Muslims? You see the status of the Muslims today? How many people go for Hajj? Give me a thousands, hundreds of thousands. How many people go to Hajj and Umrah? Millions, agreed? Millions. So the guy tells that Sheikh, there's no one dua. You know, people pray to God, oh Allah, relieve the hardship, or uh, lift the hardship from the believers. Not one believer, Allah accepts their dua. What is this? What kind of God is that? And some of us may be shaken. Ah, where is the Ummah? Where is this? So the Shaykh tells him, you are right, we do make dua. We might not see it happening. But then the Shaykh said one thing to share with you. He told the guy, what company do you work for? He's like me. He's like, yeah, what company do you work for? He's like, I work for company A. He's like, okay. He's like, let's say there's company B. And the company B start giving bonuses to their employees. Would you be upset that company B did not give you a bonus? He said, no, because I'm in company A and I did not work for company. And he said, when you work for Allah, Allah will give you the bonus. When you work and you act and you walk the talk, you will see Allah's blessings coming. And that's what we need to do collectively. May Allah make it easy for all of us. Allah said, Allah does not change the state of the people until they change the state from within. May Allah grant us wisdom. With this being said, the dua was made. The Prophet did everything he can and he made the dua. Brothers and sisters, the enemy, the army has arrived. 10,000 soldiers, a scene never seen before. They come and the Muslims see that. And the disbelievers, Bani Nadir, Quraysh, Ghatafan, the tribes, they're shocked. Why? What is this? What is this? About 10 feet deep, 15 feet wide, 3 miles long? Would go a different angle. They tried. There's no way. 
This is impossible. How is it possible? With Allah, it will be possible, inshallah. They get upset with shoot arrows. The Muslims shoot back. They assess, can a horse jump this? The horse cannot jump 15 feet. They get upset. So what do we do? We will kill you, but through hunger and starvation. We will put a siege around the city. So this is blocked, 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 and you have the trench and you have us here. So you know what? We may not fight, but until you run out of food and drink because you cannot have any more transportation, major ones, that you die. But brothers and sisters, once again we said before, the Muslims will strive and Allah will bless. Both struggled, both struggled, so much so that the enemy had to think of another idea. So much so that one of the Yahud from Bani Nadir, Huyayi ibn Akhtab, what does he do? He has a plan. The plan is to go from the back door. Back door from behind, what does that mean? Who is still in Medina? Yahud, Bani? Qurayza. So the other Yahud said, if we're able to convince Qurayza to join forces, it will be like a clamp. Let's see it. That's Bani Qurayza. Did you see that? So if we get these people to collaborate with us, it's done. It's over. So Huyay sneaks, I don't know where, for how, how, through the palm trees, whatever, he comes in. He tells the leader of Bani Qurayza, listen up. He knocks. The guy doesn't open the door for him. He's like, I know you, bro. You're a loser. He's like, open up, bro, don't be stingy, open up. What, you think I'm gonna eat your food? Then he opened the door. He's like, listen, I come with a great plan. He's like, you're coming with a horrible plan. He's like, collaborate with us. Forget that peace treaty you have with the Muslims. Forget that, come on. Grow up, man. We got 10,000 soldiers awaiting outside. You and us together. Muslims will never be in such further worse situation. Just say yes. He's like, no way, no way. Look what Banu Quraidah say, ready for this? They said, we never saw anything from Muhammad illa wafa'an wa sidqa. We saw nothing from Muhammad but faithfulness and truthfulness. I told you, they know he's a prophet. Back and forth, back and forth, what happened to Banu Quraidah? They get convinced and they're willing to attack. And Banu Quraidah now is set to attack from behind. This is dead, this is done. What makes it so bad is that there are Muslim families here. So some of the women, the, the grandparents, the children are hiding in these homes right there. It was devastation. It was absolutely sad. Brothers and sisters, the rumors come to the believers and they hear. And Allah best described it. Imagine. Guys, guess what happened? What? Banu Quraidah. What? Join forces with the confederates with the other united enemy. You know what Allah said? الأبصار, their eyes shifted out of fear. الحناجر, and the hearts went to the top of the throats of fear. بالله, and you start doubting God. It's bad. It's so tough. Family in the back. We're, that's it. It's over. That's what it may seem like. Hunalik, Allah says, right then and there, Uptuliya al Mu'minun. The believers were tested. Wazulzilu zilzal and shadida. And the believers were shaken violently. Shaken with their hearts, shaken with their bodies. This is what just happened. We did everything right. Not like Uhud, someone disobeyed. But the hypocrites were the ones who did not control themselves. The hypocrites, you know what they said? All what, no, this news came out. Look what the hypocrites said. Hypocrites exposed. Hypocrites are the worst part of society. Hypocrites are the ones who show you, they love you, in their heart, they hate you. They stab you from the back, not from the front. The enemy that you know, you kind of mentally prepared. Hypocrites, you're not mentally prepared to the most part. May Allah protect us from hypocrisy. Don't feel safe that you will die without being a hypocrite, in terms of what? Be worried, because that's what the Sahaba were worried. May Allah keep us all believers, say Ameen, and may Allah protect us from hypocrisy. Look what they say, they said, and by the way, when do hypocrites shine the most? When? When the Muslims are strong or weak? They pop up. When the Muslims are weak. And now, the weakest point in the history of probably Islam. And they say, you, Muhammad, 
And God kept promising us false promises. Ghurura. We will conquer Asham. We will conquer Yemen. We can't, that's what they said. We can't even take and use the bathroom. We not safe enough to use the bathroom, and he's telling us conquer this and conquer that. And they yatasallalun, and they say, you know what? We need to go home because we're in danger. And Allah says their homes were actually not in danger. Brothers and sisters, when this happened, the believers maintained their steadfastness. You know what they said? Hada ma wa'adan Allah. This is what Allah and His Messenger promised us. What did Allah and His Messenger promise? Allah and His Messenger gave a promise in the Quran. You want to know the promise? Allah says, Am hasibitum anta adkhulul jannah al ayah. Allah says, Do you think you will go to Jannah and you will not face what the people in the past have faced? What do you mean? For us to go to Jannah, we have to face something. That's what Allah is telling the believers. What is it? What did they face in the past? They were tested, darra, and they were tested through hardship and shaking, so much so that they said, Mata Nasrullah. Until they said, When is Allah's victory coming? So this far is what they're going through, correct? So Allah promises if you go through that hardship and you are patient, what did Allah say after that? Ala inna nasrullahi. Qareeb. Allah said, then my victory is near. So the believers got into their mind. This is it. This is the shaking test. If we are to persevere it, then what comes next? Allah's victory. Can we remember that, inshallah? That's how they were able, subhan, that's the importance of knowledge and practicing your faith. So when you face a hardship, you're ready. You see that? We never learn, never learn how to exit a building when it's on fire yes or no okay so there's real fire right now this is how you do i don't know what you mean uh, go 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 no what do they do fire drills right you practice you learn so today you attend today you learn ah so if i'm a believer i am patient i persevere you know i fight within my limits I know Allah's victory is coming, so you mentally prepare. May Allah make us all prepared. May Allah, first of all, grant us afiyah, ease, Amir Rabbil Alameen. When this happened, brothers and sisters, were the believers not steadfast? Did they not work hard? Yes. The Bismillah, Allah's victory is on its way. Allah sends His soldiers. What was Allah's soldiers? They were rihan wa junudan lam tarawha. It was severe, bitter, cold winds. And soldiers you do not see. Which were they? Who were they? They were the angels. They came and what happened? Brothers and sisters, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The wind came to Quraysh. Remember that 10,000 people there? And it flipped their tents. Flipped their pots. Turned off their fire. It was a cold weather. Everything destroyed there. Until they got weakened and weakened. So the Prophet ﷺ, he tells the companions who can go to the people and tell, and tell me their latest update. Can you imagine doing that? Can you guys imagine crossing the trench? Okay, I will go, right? Or going through the ends. The Prophet said, who will go on the other side and give me their latest updates, how they're doing with this wind? The companions, they said, Hudayfa, no one stood up. Abu Bakr, no. Umar. <laughs> Uthman, Ali. No. So the Prophet said, Who will go on the other side? Give me an update. Ja'alahu Allahu ma'ya yawm al qiyamah. And Allah will make them with me in Jannah. Now who got up? No one. <laughs> right? He rep now the third time. Who would go get the updates? May Allah make him with me in Jannah. After the third time, who got up? No one. <laughs> You guys are nervous. So the Prophet says, Hudayfa, qum. Hudayfa, get up. Hudayfa said, I had no other option. Nadani <laughs> bi'isni, he called me by my name. So he says, Hudayfa, go the other side, give me the latest updates, wala tuhdithanna shay, and don't do anything besides that. What do you, what's your task? Get me what? Updates, that's it. Don't do anything else. Don't get them angry, do whatever, no. Hudayfa said, we'll do. So Hudayfa said, the moment I went to the fulfilling of the task, he swears by Allah. I'm not sure if he says wallahi or not, but he says, It's as if I went into a spa. It was cold. 
And then Allah changed the atmosphere on the individual. And wallahi, that's what Allah does. And Allah knows that some of you went through that before. What? Some of you went through that before. And Allah knows best. You were sick one day. But they went to fulfill a task for the sake of Allah. I want to do this action that is good. And you're sick and you're knocked out. But Allah puts the energy and you were able to fulfill the task. But what happens? Once you're done, you go back to being sick. Subhanallah. This is the VIP protection coverage from Allah. al al khasa Innani ma'akuma asma'u. Allah gave that protection to Musa alayhi salam, correct? That private specific protection. Tajri bi'a'yunina, Noah, 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 when he was on the ark, private, not private, VIP protection special. May Allah grant it to all of you. You want it? You want to taste it? You want to feel it? Go on the path of Allah and watch what happens. May Allah grant it to all of us. Say, I mean, Hudayf was like, it was warm. He's walking and walking. He says, and I saw the leader himself. Who was it? Abu Sufyan. And he was trying to warm up himself with whatever fire was available. So now Hudayfa is on the other end, the only Muslim amongst 10,000. So Hudayfa said, ah, oh, this is my opportunity. He gets his bow. He takes his arrow, puts the arrow on the bow. Is that right? The Prophet says, give me updates. ولا تحدثن شيئا. He got the arrow, pulls it. He says, then I remembered what the Prophet said. Don't do anything, but give me the news. Can we be like that? Yeah, yeah, but things are different now. What did Allah tell you to do? Yeah, but you know in 2020? Pork is haram, khanzir. Yeah, but pork is haram, but the manufacturers these days, the way they clean the body is like, according to my biology class, like, well, I think like all the germs are... Don't eat pork, brother. Just cross. He took the arrow, put it in the bucket, put the bow back. He's like, wallah, I could have killed him. I could have shot him right there. Would have ended the battle. So he says, I came, and Abu Sufyan was smart. Abu Sufyan was, was slick. He felt a vibe. Maybe one of the Muslims are here. Authentic narration. So Abu Sufyan wants to give a sermon. But before he started his sermon, he says, I want everyone in the army to check who is next to him. Because maybe the Muslims have sneaked someone in. Hudayf was like, so I right away, I began. I was proactive. I said, who are you? <laughs> okay. And who are you? Okay. We're good. We're good. All right, go ahead. May Allah make us smart. And he watched, and he, let's not go into detail and example. It'd be wise what to say and what, yani, what to pose together. May Allah grant us wisdom. So then Abu Sufyan says, listen, you guys, he's talking now, how safe. I don't think we should stay here anymore. Look what the wind is doing to us. Knocking out our tents, flipping our pots, turning off the fire. La muqama lana. This is not right. You gotta get going. Irtahilu. You know what? Let's all get going because I'm leaving. Hudayfa hears that. That's it. They're leaving. We won. Maintain his emotions. Right? He's like, oh, right? Excited. So then Hudayfa said, then I went back, crossed the trench, went to the Prophet. Then he said, it became so cold. <laughs> then he told the Prophet what happened. And brothers and sisters, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the conclusion. Allah says, وَرَدَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِغَيْظِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and Allah repelled those who have disbelieved with their rage, they're angry. All these resources, 10,000 people, we couldn't do anything to them. We couldn't get the people to get killed, couldn't get people to surrender. غَيْظِهِمْ angry. And wallahi, that's exact emotions that people will feel who try to humiliate Islam. May Allah grant us wisdom and allow us to appreciate our deen. Then Allah says, Lam yanalu khayra. They went and came back empty handed. That's it. Then, Wakafallahul mu'minin al qital. Who fought the battle? Allah said, He fought the battle. And He's the one who sufficed the believers from fighting. No fighting took place. And they defeated the greatest army. So now, what you need to also remember defeating an obstacle, overcoming something, having such defeat like that is not necessarily about what weapons one has. No, no. As they say, what do they tell you? It's not the size of the body in the fight. 
It's the size of the fight in the heart that matters. Here is a better example. Iman and faith and yaqeen is what makes you a winner. May Allah increase us in certainty. Say ameen. And in conclusion, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ قَوِيًّا عَزِيزًا And Allah says, and Allah is the strong, the Almighty. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. The Prophet ﷺ then, Jibreel tells him, it's not over yet. What do you mean? You got to go to Bani Quraidha, the ones who were treacherous, committed treason. And the Prophet and the companions applied the rule on them which Allah was approving of. And Banu Quraidha were eliminated. They were no longer in Medina. No longer in Medina. The men from Banu Quraidha, Rasul applied the rule. What was the rule for that treason they committed? Qatil al muharibina minhum, which is to kill the men who were the warriors amongst them. You see that? And that is something they're aware of, and that's the rule which Allah has approved of. At this point, brothers and sisters, Rasul he, he says, and I will end with a statement, then we'll have Brother Osama say a few things. The Prophet said, From now on, we will no longer be in defense. We will no longer be the ones that are receiving the enemy. We will no longer be the ones that are just protecting ourselves and be in that point which appears to be weak. From now on, we will be in the offense. What does that mean? What are his plans? What did he want to do next? We'll mention it, inshallah, after the announcements from Brother Osama.